Representative Nornis, we thank you for taking time to talk to us. Can you start by explaining who you are and give us some information on your background? Born and raised in Minnesota, except for a couple of years I lived in South Dakota when my wife and I moved there for just a short time. So, Minnesotan, um, went to school in a small community. After school, went on to become uh, uh, involved in the radio business, which has been my, my working career up until the time I was elected to the House of Representatives. So most of those years were spent in Fergus Falls since the mid-60s, so that's kind of my hometown now. I consider that uh, our home, although I wasn't born there. But I had an opportunity living there to raise my, our three children, to be involved in a lot of things in the community, served on the school board, um, ran for city council once, lost, um, but it was an experience again, learning experience. So it's, 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 uh, so I, I come to the legislature with the small town background, business background, and, uh, and ba background of raising a family uh, in rural Minnesota. And it's all positive as, as far as I can see it. Why did you decide to run for a seat in the House? Well, it didn't happen overnight, didn't happen uh, early in my, my life. Again, my, my initial goal, two of them I guess, one was to get a job and keep it. And that's hard when you're in the radio business. Anybody that's in it will tell you that. It's not exactly secure or high paying. So to get a job in that field, progress, uh, get different experiences, and ultimately I, I was tired of being an employee and my goal was to be a boss. And the ultimate goal would be to own my own station. And through things that happened over those years, I, I got to be all of those things, including uh, my own boss with a corporation of two members. Um, so at the same time I served, as I mentioned, on the school board. I was there for about 12 years. Felt uh, that was fun, or not exactly fun, but a good experience. But always a little frustrated, and I think if you talk to school board members today, they'll say exactly the same thing. Frustrated by what the state of Minnesota does to them. How they are so powerless in many ways at a school, local school level, to do what they want to do because of the state, whether it's funding or regulations or, or w whatever it might be that kind of ties their hands. So that's when it first occurred to me, you know, if I had a chance and it seemed like an impossible dream kind of, if I could be on the other side and work from the state level, um, that would be something personally that I would really uh, think would be a good goal. And so I had an opportunity a little later when the local representative who had been in this position for 12, 14, 16 years, I forget how many, ran into a little problem with the local members of his caucus who felt he had fallen out of favor. They didn't want to endorse him for another term. And that's unusual. I mean, they just, they just flat out didn't endorse a candidate at that time. And they needed one. So I thought, well, here's an opportunity. My local senator had also helped a little bit to nudge me towards that. And uh, so I thought, well, this is a chance to do it. Again, I was running my own station. I was my own boss, had employees, I had obligations. Um, my oldest son was going to the university at that time. I mean, it was not a time when we, I mean, we, we needed me to be home. But uh, so I ran and lost. And then I ran again and, and I lost. And then about 1996, the third time I ran and that time I won. So, you know, once I got started, um, I don't know where that energy came from to do it again and do it again. Um, some were probably, although they didn't tell me that, probably suggesting that I should quit. But it motivated me each time 
to try harder. And in 96, a miracle of some kind happened, and, and, and I won. And uh, so I've been here since. The first uh, session was 1997. Can you tell us about the legislation you have worked on in the past that you are most proud of? I've been a part of a lot of different pieces of legislation, some of them directly connected to my district. But I think in general, my goal, as I mentioned earlier, uh, had to do with education. And so in all of these 19, almost 20 years, I've, I've always served on education, early education, uh, K through 12 education. Uh, for the third, uh, third time now, I'm serving as chair of the higher education. So education has always been kind of at the top of my priority list. Um, I don't know if we've made life's life any easier for the educators. You know, we've certainly tried. One person can't do it all, but that's kind of the goal anyway. And uh, isn't to that, we've, you know, I've dealt with some bonding projects. Last session, it had to do with some flooding pro problems uh, that we try, try to resolve, and we did. Um, so I, I can't. I can't tell you one major statewide issue that I was the chief author of or that I really pushed. Uh, more of a utility person that'll support things and help things. Um, so I kind of see that as my goal. I, I'm not, it's my Norwegian heritage. I, I'm not looking for the, the spotlight or the, uh, you know, uh, I could be in the background and be just real happy as long as I'm making something happen. And so that's, that's kind of who I am, how I do it. What would you say is the most difficult aspect of being a legislator? What I look at is what is the challenging thing that other prospective House members might consider. For me, the timing was right. I, I sold my radio station just at the same time that I became a House member. It kind of all happened at the same time wasn't the plan necessarily, but it worked out very well. So, so I, I didn't have to worry about my business back home. I, I could concentrate 100% on what I was doing now as a House member, and most people can't do that. You know, they've got a young family they gotta worry about, they've got a business to worry about, they've got an employer to worry about, in addition to doing this job. And, and this, to do, it, to do it well, again, that's just my feeling about it, it takes a lot of time. It's more than just the session down here where we're here for sometimes five months, sometimes three months, depending on the year. But it's the time back home and the people that want your time to help them, to attend their meetings, uh, sit in on all kinds of different things. You have to be all things to everybody. And to do it well, you have to have the time available to do that. So for a, for a House member, for me, all of those things have been okay. I, I pride myself basically on being a very responsive member, so if people call me, uh, I'll deal with it right away and try to help them right away. Um, and they know that, whether it's an insurance issue or whatever it might be. But for someone that's, again, working full time and busy, that's uh, a handicap. And it, it's a deterrent, I think, for people who want to do this because uh, um, Financially, they maybe don't think they can handle it because it doesn't pay well. And the second part is it might jeopardize other things that are important, like a job. Uh, so I, I, th I think that's an ongoing consideration that people looking to recruit House members, or Senate members for that matter, it's the time commitment that goes with it. And for those that say it's not a full-time job, it should be a part-time job, it frankly is more of a full-time job. If you could be a teacher of something, what would you teach? Well, I came close to being a teacher at one time. Um, at my first job, my first radio station, the tech school in that community started a broadcast program. And uh, I was offered by, I guess the teacher, or the person in charge of that program, uh, had worked for me at the radio station as I trained him in. Then he went to start that school. And so I, it was tempting to, to try and do that. Uh, as it turned out, I'm glad I didn't because I don't know what I'd be doing today because I, I think that program is closed. But anyway, um, if I was going to teach, 
it probably would be communications. Knowing what I don't know, that's where I feel the most comfortable. And in some ways I have been a teacher because all of my employees that I hired, I don't remember any of them coming to me with any previous experience. They were either coming right out of school or right off the street. I taught them to be salesmen, I taught them to be news people, I taught them to be broadcasters. Um, and I often looked at it as that way because many of them went from my place to another, another step forward and I know one at one time worked at WCCO in the Twin Cities after graduating kind of from my school. Um, it was frustrating because when I'd get somebody really good at something, then they would leave. But I, so I considered myself a teacher in that way. Representative Nornis, thank you for your time. Well, thank you.